Buenos dias, this is Caipacho with the weekly Pele Report, hanging out here in the city. <clears throat> I did find a park, though. <laughs> yeah, March 13th, 2019. The moon over there in Gemini, <clears throat> you'll remember last week, was the new moon in Pisces. Now she's moved along, moving into Gemini, following on, following on. Tomorrow, we're going to have the first quarter square moon 90 degrees I'm going to talk about the 90 degree aspect a little bit here today that's at 23 degrees 33 minutes of Gemini squaring the Sun over there in Pisces still traveling along with Mercury you know coming right along it conjuncts with Mercury tomorrow but it's really going on all week Mercury's going retrograde past that Sun and they're both in square to Jupiter. The sun's exactly square Jupiter today up there in Sagittarius. So we've got a beautiful, you know, sun, Mercury squaring Jupiter. Just finished that conjunction with Neptune. What else is happening? Mars. Mars moving on through Taurus. Is in a nice trine to Saturn tomorrow. Moving along slow like steady through Taurus. Just like I'm walking. <laughs> it's going to come into a trine with Pluto by next week. So we've got a nice Mars trining Saturn and Pluto all week. As the moon moves on Thursday into Cancer. And of course that Cancer is going to oppose Saturn, Pluto, South Node. Moon's going to come into a conjunction with her nor North Node. Yeah, and that'll be happening on Saturday. And then by Sunday, she moves into Leo. Oh, yeah. Opposite what? Well, she'll be coming up to an opposition with Venus because Venus has broken free into the liberated sign of Aquarius. And she's going to be cruising along. She's going a little faster than Mars, right? So we're going to have a nice Venus squaring Mars building up through this week but it's going to be exact next week i'll be talking more about that i mean there's a lot coming on next week yeah next week not only is the full moon at zero degrees of aries libra moon in libra the sun is going to be going into aries the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere happening next week on the full moon. Ow! I'll talk about that more next week, but you know, it's building up this week, so I might talk about it a little bit here too. And let me look at the camera. All right, that moon is in Gemini. Gemini is the city. It's be here now. It's action, commerce, business, Mercury. What's going on right in front of the tip of your nose? Lots of things happening, change, juggling, cars going, leaf blowers. I mean, it's like, woo! <laughs> I guess I'm in the perfect place at the perfect time for this Pele report. And what do I want to talk about? You know, I mean, this, I want to talk about the phases, the phases. You know, we had that new moon in Pisces, I conjunct Neptune last week. It was so beautiful and amazing. And I just kind of talked about, you know, releasing and letting go and being inspired by spirit and, you know, in that place of meditation. And, you know, things keep changing. Things keep moving. The moon marches on. You know, went into Aries and Taurus. And we want to look at the phases, the phases. Because we're coming to the close, the end, the finish of a year's cycle. The sun moving through Pisces, ending, finishing, closing, completing, wrapping things up for the whole year in preparation for the equinox, the sun moving into Aries. The start of a new solar cycle, a new year's beginning. Astrologically, it's like very powerful moment. And to have a full moon happening at the same time is very unique, inspiring, and 
unique, yeah, different. And, and what we have is, so there's these phases, and it's interesting to have this new moon in Pisces. A new moon is a new beginning, like I said, for the, for the monthly cycle, the lunar cycle, and then she comes around, and it's like, what we do, we act, we step out, something new emerges, some new desire. This is the new beginning of a new lunar cycle, a new emotion, a new revelation. And we want to, you know, move forward. And there it's instinctive. It's just do now, act now, think later, just go for it. And then the moon moves on to the 45 degree, right? The crescent phase in the sun-moon cycle. We've just had this crescent phase. If you've seen her in the night, night sky you see this beautiful crescent and it's the light emerging it's a waxing it's the the moon's getting bigger and bigger and bigger approaching this square right that's you know happening tomorrow and the thing is that at that 45 degree aspect and this moving through that you know that phase of the sun moon lunation cycle there is reflection it's like yang at the new moon and then yin at the crescent moon and then yang at the first quarter square and then yin at the gibbous it goes like breathing so we act out you know or we come with a new desire a new inspiration for a new painting or a new song or a new dance the way I want to move through life with that new moon and and we act on it and then there's this kind of like uh oh what did I do <laughs> what did I just do you know I, I threw myself into something without thinking and you start to reflect and there's this entropy okay there's these forces from the past there's these habits, okay, the way that we've always done things or the friends that we've always had or the job that, you know, you know, we may not be happy, but we're doing it and it's providing security and there's all, there's, so there's this inner reflection and this fear can come up of letting go of the past. Like the mantra today, the snake sheds its skin, it gets naked, it's vulnerable. When we let go of the past, we let go of an old identity, an old relationship, an old job, an old situation, and we go into the new. We're vulnerable, we're innocent, we're naive, we don't know what's going to happen. And it can be very unsettling. And then, now, tomorrow, comes this first quarter square where it's really time, okay, to more consciously, fully, and completely push, make that push. It's called, Dane Ridger called it a crisis in, con no, a crisis in action. So the seed needs to break out, break through. This is this first quarter square that we're in right now. And so it's really something that we have this urge, this need at this time to let go of the past, the known, the familiar, and that has also a lot to do particularly with the Sun retrograde Mercury squaring Jupiter, conjuncting Neptune, that whole process of disillusionment. Why are we moving on? What are we letting go of in the past? It's because something wasn't working. Our lives were not a true reflection of our future self. So there can also be sorrow. There can also be grief during this lunation cycle. And this inner sense of, yeah, I, you know, there could be regrets, but I've got to go. Reminds me of that Led Zeppelin song, Moving On or something, you know. <laughs> it's like, shh, gotta ramble on. I got it's got, I got to be moving on and there can be mixed emotions around all of that that letting go is like I said it's kind of scary it's like you know winter you got these coats on and you're all nice and warm and then spring comes and it's like you got to take that coat off and it's like oh you know there's that moment right where you're exposed you're exposing kind of a new leaf like a new bud 
and then the and then so, then this moon moves on and you know it's going to go through cancer and then it's you know going to trine we're going to have that you know that first 120 degree aspect but then it's going to come around to the full next week and that is a culmination okay you know it's it's it, all this kind of inner work now going on is going to again then psh, manifest socially in our relationships and outside you know into the world it's great I'm actually gonna be going to uh, Chichen Itza I'm gonna be uh, watching the snake cool cool Khan at exactly the equinox okay the sun rises at a particular place and point where the you can watch the snake move down the pyramid and come to earth this is like this incarnation from Pisces okay into this Aries in the and then and the full moon again it's like you know taking this inner world and it's time now to come out it's time to show our new selves it's time to show our new beliefs our new realities our new awarenesses uh, it's just like moving so far what was I reading it was like people today want to be doing what pleasure without happiness happiness without knowledge knowledge without wisdom and uh, and the other one I was reading Toni Morrison or something wrote in the in the book beyond something about you know that there's data and that data you know turns into information and the information turns into knowledge and the knowledge turns into wisdom but these things are different data is not wisdom okay information is not knowledge and you know with the with Google and with the influx okay of movies videos social media articles you know Wikipedia I mean you've got all this information Gemini needs to be brought more into knowledge and wisdom Sagittarius and this is where Jupiter is now that's why I said this year is about deciphering what is true there's so much BS going on I think back to you know the new paradigm I started the new paradigm astrology uh, thing about 15 years ago or so my my website and I had this idea of what the new paradigm was and what I thought the new paradigm was 15 years ago is not what I think the new paradigm is today. Things have changed in the last 15 years. <laughs> We're putting together a new website. I have to write a new mission statement. You know, I'm, I'm wrestling around with just like what new paradigm astrology cooperative is and what the new paradigm is. And it's a, it's a fascinating process. Uh, what I want to add on is it's not just going from data, information, knowledge, wisdom, but how about going from wisdom to love? Yeah, this is the you know this is that movement even from you know the head to the heart space, and, and I'd like to see, imagine that the new paradigm, you know, is actually shifting all this Aquarian science technology information and you know ways that we can mess with nature <laughs> into you know this new moon in Pisces is listen and be with nature and 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 receive from the subtle energetic realms the etheric realms and the astral realms these other spiritual worlds and not just be overwhelmed overtaken by materialism materialistic scientific method that has led, uh, led us and is leading us more and more and more into the realms of Araman into the realms okay of the profane we can't forget the sacred we can't remove that sacred and so this is where the other part of the mantra comes in to prepare myself to shine so it's like it's a kind of a simple mantra today but if you go beyond just the words and you go into the feeling of it that there is this letting go but then that letting go is only part of a process part of an evolutionary process towards manifesting our full potential as a spiritual human 
being, connecting the divine with the temporal, connecting the infinite with the present. So it's really something. It's it's a, it's a very it's a good time to be very aware of where you are and who you are with and what you are exposing yourself to during these psychically sensitive times. Okay, this, you know, this, this is a time, this sun moving through Pisces where we, it's like our, our, our boundaries are down, our walls are down, our immune systems are down, and we're open, psychically, the heart, boom, look at that. They drive down the street selling eggs, man, selling all kinds of stuff, <laughs> just loudspeakers. It's not so much around noise pollution here in Costa Rica, man. <laughs> it's not at that place yet. <laughs> so yeah, watch out where you are and what you, what's going in those ears, whether you understand it or whether you hear it or whether you're listening or not. Whether you're listening or not, guess what? You're absorbing your surroundings. <laughs> Subconsciously and unconsciously. So what you want to do is consciously set up the beautiful artistic space and you want to surround yourself with as many, you know, flowers and, you know, trees and birds and whatever as you possibly can, right? You know, and just like really be in kind of a cushioned, it's kind of a cushioned time, you know? I mean, they, they, they make the, I mean, I, we had our kids at home but you know now they're even making you know the rooms in the hospitals at least have you know some cushions. <laughs> My daughter had her baby in the hospital and I was just like whoa surrounded with this you know this machine and that machine and wired up here and wired up there and you know the, you know, the electronic bed and this is like oh man. <sighs> we are getting more and more removed from the natural cycles and we need to be like take extra care, consciousness, and caution during these times to really, boom, shine our light into the darkness, shine our light, you know, we create this new paradigm. And if we don't create the new paradigm, some weird paradigm is going to create us. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, right? I mean, not that it's do or die, but you know what, you know, there's powerful forces at work on this planet, okay, and they're not all light. There's <laughs> a lot of madness going on around here, baby. Ow! So like the snake shedding its skin, I now leave behind the old person I used to be and prepare myself to shine. Be good to do an inner reflection, retrograde mercury, and just, you know, feel into that old person and in a loving way, release that old, fearful, limited, suppressed person and say goodbye because spring is coming, the equinox is coming, Aries is coming, and it's time to let go of the old and prepare ourselves to charge <laughs> into the new. Yeah! Like the snake shedding its skin I now leave behind the old person I used to be and prepare myself to shine. May you shine on, you crazy diamond. Namaste. Aloha. So much love. Ow!